The first computer I had growing up was an IBM 5150, commonly known as the IBM PC. You might have never heard of this particular model, but I'm sure you've heard of its legacy. It's the ancestor of all modern PCs. This is the first computer that I played games on, and also the first one that I used to program with. We upgraded it over time with a hard disk, a second monitor, mouse, and a modem. I have such nostalgia for this computer that, a few years ago, I got a tattoo of it. The tattoo has some black light ink on it too, so the monitor can glow in the dark. It's very cool. Lately, as I've been using DOS for my other videos, I've found myself wanting one of these to play with and test on. Unfortunately, I live in an apartment in a big city, and I just don't have the room to have giant old computers sitting around. And to be honest, 99% of the time I wouldn't be using it anyway, so that's kind of wasteful. So, I decided to do the next best thing. I created my own fake IBM 5150 in Godot. <laughs> 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 Creating the model was fairly straightforward. I'm still a Blender amateur and made some mistakes, but I got something that looked nice enough. Texturing was easy, too. Most of it is plastic in two basic colors. I used Substance Painter's grainy plastic and tweaked the settings until it looked good. Once it was loaded into Godot, I adjusted the lighting and I was off to the races. I even modeled a little on switch here on the side that you can flip. And wait, what's this? A Sierra game? And it's fully playable? This is my weird coding experiment. Playing a Sierra game in the Godot engine. It was a fun little project to get this running. Godot has a technology called GD Native, which allows you to use shared libraries in your project. This means you can compile code in another language, for example, C, and not have to recompile Godot each time you change it. In theory, anything you can compile into a library can be used in Godot this way, although you'll have to add the glue to make it work. In my case, I needed to take a frame buffer from an emulated game engine and send it over to Godot via GD Native. At first, I really wanted this to run DOSBox or Scum VM. Sadly, those projects are both quite big, and I've not much experience with large C projects, so I had trouble getting them to build cleanly. I also looked through their code and found it difficult to find a frame buffer I could hook into. I searched around a little more for simpler emulators and found Sarian. Sarian is an AGI emulator that was eventually merged into Scum VM and provides the AGI support there. The project has been discontinued, but the source is still available, and, to my surprise, was quite simple to build and understand. Sarian even has an abstraction set up for people to create their own renderers. I removed the STL part of the codebase and implemented the simple methods myself. Once I had it updating the frame buffer, I set up Godot to pull it once a frame, and bam, a Sierra game was running on my fake PC. Unfortunately, it would crash Godot fairly often. I'd naively made a bad assumption about how Sarian works. Most games have a main loop, and every frame they update some data, then draw it, and loop again. Sarian looked like it had this structure, so instead of making the main loop loop forever, I made it handle one tick, and executed one tick every time I asked the engine for a new frame. This is known as cooperative multitasking. Unfortunately, a bunch of code paths, specifically those that handle user input, create separate blocking loops until input is received. If the game hit one of those code paths, it would lock up in an infinite loop, since Godot never had a chance to run its code and submit the new input events. My solution was to spawn Sarian in its own thread. That way it could loop infinitely, as much as it wanted, and Godot would still be free to run. This was pretty straightforward to implement, since GD Native allows you to do anything you want in a library. The only somewhat tricky part was setting up the mutexes to avoid Sarian writing to the frame buffer as Godot was reading it. Once I got that working, the Sierra games were running smoothly and fully playable. I also added a nice shader to emulate a CRT, thanks to Pend00 on Godot shaders. It looks great. As always, I've put the full source code and assets for this on GitHub. You'll need to bring your own AGI game and drop it in the project game subdirectory. It's played everything I've tried so far. Also, hey, maybe you're better versed in large software projects than I am and can get DOSBox or ScumVM running in this thing. Send me a pull request if so. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Also, check out some of my other videos. Let me know what you like so I can continue to make fun stuff in the future. Cheers!